All right. Good evening. And you're here with Reverend Smash Tree Walker, the Order of Standing Oak, and Raven Temple of CX Wicca here in Springfield, Missouri. And you're with me for the first installment of a new series I like to call Night Magic. And we're going to begin at the beginning. We're going to talk about magic tonight, where it comes from, how we get into it, the different kinds of magic. Just we're going to go through the whole gamut of everything. So for the next hour or however long, it, however long we go, we've got a lot to talk about. We've got things for everybody to because, you know, it's just like everybody out there has questions about what magic is and this, that, and the other. So it's like that's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to talk about this and we're going to go through and we're going to have, uh, you know, maybe not not, you know, weekly, but as much as I can, we're going to go ahead and do more episodes of night magic and so but first before we even get started i'm going to be taking this device right here and i am going to hold this up and we are going to open a bottle of raspberry mead There we go. We are almost completely in there. And then, got to move this over here. And then we just kind of wobble. And I will set you out of the way for now. And if you're out there, join me if you have a beverage that you'd like to uh, get with. And also, I'd like to let you all know that we are recording this. This is going up on YouTube, the YouTube channel, A Pagan Perspective. And we'll talk more about that at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the, 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 the show tonight to get together. But first, before I do that, join me in... Uh, an adult beverage... And we are starting out with some of this beautiful, it's just, oh my gosh, this stuff is just incredible. And I, it's a Friday night, and we have possibilities of some rain coming in after all of this dangerous shit that's been going on with, um, you know, the, the, the flooding and everything down in uh, New Orleans and in New York. It's like now we're finally starting to get some of it. So but we've needed it for a while. We've just been desperate here because of the heat and everything. So, all right, we're going to go ahead and try some of this beautiful. Isn't that gorgeous? Look how clear that is, how it sparkles and shines in the light. We're going to give this a taste. I, this is a bottle that I haven't gotten to uh, click into yet. So, and hopefully we'll get some people in here. If not, we'll just go ahead and stick this up as a teaching uh, show but first we're going to take a drink oh my god that is gorgeous oh my god that's gorgeous oh beautiful red raspberry all right so now that we've got the uh, the niceties out of the way, like I say, my name is Raven Smash Tree Walker at Order Standing Oak and of uh, Raven Temple of CX Wickham. And at this time of year, we kind of tend to turn towards talking about and learning more about the idea of magic. And that what we're going to talk about, there's a lot that we're going to be talking about. There's types of magic. There's thoughts about what magic is and stuff like that. So for many of us, we are followers of a pagan tradition. Others are not. But for those that would be watching this video and, and stuff like that, as these people, the various ones all around the world, 
uh, have always had a connection to the magical world. And the magical world is the energies and things that we work with that are beyond what science can explain. And also how they tie to various practices and religious aspects for those of us that are pagan. And uh, we have to look at the idea of what magic, what magic is. Magic for us, we've heard the stories, we've heard the fairy tales of the Wicked Witch, of the Fairy Godmother, uh, of the magical shoes, and these different things. And the one thing that the myths and legends have told us are the stories of being able to do things that were outside of the natural, okay? It's supernatural, if you will, okay? And over time, even now in the modern world, where we are right now in the year 2021, um, people have been, and people in societies all over the world have been, uh, you know, doing this for millennia is looking to see what the, uh, what the possibilities are, okay? And magic, for one thing, is the idea of that anything is possible, okay? Our finite minds, we put restrictions on what is and what isn't and what can and what can't happen and stuff like that. So it's like, over these centuries and, and stuff, various people have learned how to work with possibilities, to work with the energies of the earth and, and other items and things like that, that can, you know, influence situations in their life. Magic is done for a purpose. Uh, it's, it's magic is, uh, I'll start out right now. Magic is not a plaything. This isn't something where, Magic is where you can just go out and say, okay, I want to go out and win the lottery. If that was the case, the universe would be handing us out millions and millions and millions of dollars of, of money because every witch and every pagan and every magician and every person that works magically would you know, get what they want. But what it is is it's the fact that sometimes – the energy that you're putting out, it takes time to manifest. And that's what we're going to talk about. First off, whenever you take it all the way down to its, 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 its points, we're going to talk at the, very, at the very beginning. Magic is energy, okay? Energy with the, power, with the power to influence and change situations and, and flows in, of energy that are surrounding us and our situation in the universe so the air that we breathe is magical it has energy the trees outside are magical they have energy and energy is manipulated in different ways and in different forms and that's how we get these you know we get the results that we want through these manipulations and we're not going to go way deep. We're just going to give you kind of some of the ideas about what these things are. Uh, and in future episodes, we'll talk about the more, you know, where some of the magical traditions come from and things like that. So, but for right now, we're just going to deal with the basics. So you've got the idea that magic is an energy that can be influenced uh, and, and used to, to uh, uh, influence fate and things that are around us stuff like that so we have that so everybody always has the question where do we begin how do we start what do we do well first like i say you've got to kind of figure out what magic is and how it how it is, exists in the world magic is not magic is not science science is, is science is what took away the idea from human beings minds that there was anything magical you know, with the, with the Industrial Revolution and the inventions 
of various things. We moved away from that kind of thinking. We evolved. But that's what brought us into uh, the idea of those people that were outside of the norm that took the time to study and to learn and to work with these energies were magicians, were the pagans, were the witches, were the druids, were the shamans, were every kind of label that you can put on it are people that are trying to work with and harmonize and do these various things with these energies. So we have that right there. Then we have the idea, okay, so where do we, where do we begin? We start something simple with something simple. We start with a want, a, a need, something that we would like, that, a desire, something that we see that we need in our lifetime uh, for whatever it is. Okay, so you have a desire, okay? You want a new car, okay? Well, next you have to uh, figure out, well, I want a new car. Well, I don't have the money for a new car. What are some ways that we can achieve this goal and help me to get a new car? Well, one of the magical things is that you can do uh, uh, various magical workings that would allow you to get a raise at work, to get more hours at work, to uh, come into a situation where you can find a vehicle for cheap enough or payments are good enough. Just all these different things would be okay. Uh, you know, that would be in that, in that vision to uh, influence the situation that you want, which is to get a new car. And the ways that we accomplish it, oh my God, there are tons. And we're going to talk about those here in just a minute. But, you know, we look at the idea of, okay, so we know that we have a goal and that goal is to get a new car and we want to do these things. And that just the deal with the job was just the, the, the one thing right there. Uh, because if you go too big right off the bat, for me, I believe that if you go too high up, uh, unless you're just really favored by the universe and things like that, it's like just it's just not like you're just going to wake up in the morning and have a new car. Magicians have to be realists. That's why it's called practice, a magical practice. It's not just something that you do automatically and you get you get with your desires. You don't get. You don't get what you want every time right away because that's uh, that's just irresponsible for one thing. It's just it's not right. So now we look at okay. So you have the desire. You know that magic is energy that needs to be manipulated to influence the 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 world around you to influence history and, and the timeline and all of these things to get what you want. So you have to figure, what do I want to do magically to make this uh, happen? Now is where we get into the ideas behind what there are various things that we can do. Uh, a lot of things that are out there, for one, you can look at the folklore of jobs. There are, there are uh, groups all around the, the world that have had magical ideas and concepts that they use whenever they want to attract it, whenever they wanted to attract work. For whatever that is, it could be Irish, it could be Scandinavian, it could be anything. But you want to look at the, the folklore and start there first. Because that's going to give you some of the better ideas for, uh, you know, how you want to start. And a lot of times to attract the things that you want, the folklore in various myths and traditions around the world, that folklore will um, give you clues about what you need to do to uh, start working magic, okay? So you, that's one of the first things you want to do before you do anything. 
And we're going to take a drink here. Oh, man. I hope everybody's having a good night. This is just beautiful. So we've looked at the folklore and we find all of this stuff and there's all these different kinds of things that, that, uh, that we have at our, at our disposal to work magically to do the things that we want to do to bring about the change that we want. So, and I'm trying to be very, because this is for, for really new people that have never, ever, ever, ever had any kind of connection to magic. So you kind of, I'm going as, as, as step by step as I can to kind of give you an idea about what to do and where to look for your beginning of magic. Because a lot of things, you know, it's like people are afraid to work magically. Don't be afraid because, you know, if you at least try the practice and stuff, then if you work it, you know, and, and you give it a try over time, you'll figure out what works for you. And that's another thing. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about this in a minute, but there's something to uh, some ideas of what to do while you're in the process of doing your magic. But so it's like, don't be afraid because, you know, the only way that you're going to grow as a magician, as a pagan, as a witch, as whatever, is you have to do it. Um, and like I say, it doesn't have to be complicated, although we will get into some of that here in just a little bit. Um, an example of, of one of the easiest things that you can do is find yourself a chair or, or a comfy couch or wherever, have a candle lit next to you, have all everything, TV turned off, phone turned off, all of that stuff. You don't want to be for this little bit, you do not want to be, uh, you know, disturbed by things in life and around you. And you're going to sit there and you're going to close your eyes and you're going to concentrate your thoughts on the car that you want, on what it looks like and, you know, what kind of shape it's in. You can envision how many miles it has on it and all these things. And then as you're sitting there and you're picturing this, with your eyes closed, you just kind of like get into it and you start chanting new car, new car, new car, new car, and just keep going like that. And what you'll do is, A, you're going to get yourself so saturated with the thought of getting this new car that your body is going to emanate it as well. And what that's going to do is that's going to take the energy that you're working with in the universe and around you and you're going to become a conduit for that thought that energy that you want this new car and all it's it's nothing fancy you're not you're not doing anything you're just speaking and making your desires known to the universe you're putting it out there you're telling the universe what you want magically and what will happen is if if you go at it long enough, uh, you can get yourself into like a very deep drone kind of uh, like a trance, okay? And that will just keep going and you're concentrating and uh, you can get all of this out and you'll have all of this energy that is a magical force leaving your body and going out to the universe to... Uh, you know, bring that car to you and some, or to bring the money for the car or however you're wanting to start out. You know, like I say, you never really want to start big. You want to start out small so that way you can achieve this better in a better time frame. So we've done that. We've taken the time. We've done the chanting. Then we start to move into the other various kinds of magic. Okay. And I spell magic M-A-G-I-C-K as a way of distinguishing it from stage magic, sleight of hand, that kind of thing, which is spelt with the C. Um, and we've got a train coming, so I'm going to kind of let it go. 
And we're going to pour a little bit more of this beautiful mead here. Look at that. That is just gorgeous. Claret color. Love it. Ah, oh, the train just went by. Very cool. All right. Oh, that's gorgeous. Okay. So I'm going to show you some things. I have some visual aids that we're going to use for this. Um, the kinds of magic, everybody's always wondering, you know, what kind of magic should I use? What kind of magic am I interested in, for one thing, that I can start to look into? Because one thing about magic is as you learn it and you use it, it can become your specialty, okay? Whatever form that you look upon, look for, it can be what you, you know, what becomes your specialty. So one of the first kinds of magic that we have to work with is um, earth magic, which we will pull this back. We'll put this right here so everybody can see. Wish I could bring that out of the light, but I can't. All right, well, this, here, we'll put it over here. This is Earth Power by Scott Cunningham. And this book is something that I recommend for everybody that's new. Um, and it deals with simple things to do with uh, the powers of the Earth, the Earth itself. And we have the elements of magic. We're working with the elements of Earth, air, fire, water, and spirit. So whenever you take that and you look at that, you have the elements of magic, and then you start to look at the magic of the earth, magic of the trees, magic of the rocks and stones, which we'll talk about that here in just a little bit. Um, and all these things. And I, I, this is one of the, the types of magic that I work with the most is really because I think the closer that you are situated in the ways of the planet and everything, the ecosystems around you and stuff, and tapping into that kind of energy, I believe that that's where you get the most results, okay? Uh, they're extraneous things. They're little flashy fly-by-night kind of things that, you know, various pagans and, and, and magicians and things like that try to do. And some of those aren't very effective. This stuff right here can be some of the most effective magic that you'll do because it's simple. It can be done with a blade of grass. It can be done with a flower. It can be done with a stone. It can be done with a pine cone. It can be done while hugging your dog. All these kinds of things because, you know, animals are of the earth um, and you can use animals in your magic, uh, in your spell work and things like that. So you have all of these things. So one study... One thing that you can look into uh, for any kind of magical source that you need is um, the idea of, you know, working with the tides of magic, what, working with the tides of the earth itself, you know? So, I mean, that is one of the main places to start right there. And... Then we have the classic, okay? The one that everybody has had some kind of a connection to. And the reason why is because candles and fire, whether it's at a campfire or candles in your house, are energy, they're just batteries. You have these candles, you have these campfires, they're using up this fuel and they're putting out energy through their flame. And fire is a very intense, very focused, kind of energy so that's why pagans and witches and ceremonial magicians and things we use a lot of candles in our magic and our rituals because we know that they add a lot to the ritual and one of the one of the places we start is right here with just some of these and this is this book i recommend is uh coventry magic with candles oils and herbs by jackie smith and this book this book has everything, how to make candles, uh, 
cleansing spells, energizing yourself with pieces and parts of what to use uh, various types of candles for, herbs and oils that you can place onto your candles. Um, so it's like candle magic is one of the most, I mean, quintessential magical things. I mean, whenever you watch a movie or a video, you can see just all kinds of, of you know, things out there, okay? So it's like this is one of the things that I think is very, very cool that, uh, you know, we have this. Anybody can find candles. It's easy to make candles. I like to make candles. It's fun. So it's like we have a source for our rituals, things that we can do. Like I said just a little bit ago, sitting and chanting, with a lit candle off to your side can be some of the best, most effective magic and workings that you'll do because they're not overly complicated. You know, it's like easy, not easy, but it's like, it's more acceptable to your mind. And uh, uh, we're going to talk about some of the techniques and stuff that you have to kind of get used to um, a little bit as we get further into the uh, into the evening here but it's like you know so we have these extraneous trappings the things that we can do also magic is very effective whenever we time it with the times of the month the seasons of the year winter spring summer fall uh uh, uh, uh spring and summer are those times whenever we want to manifest we want things to grow we want to bring things into our lives, into our family's lives and things like that. And then you have the slower time of the year. We want to look at the fall and the winter. And when we look at the fall and the winter, we see that A, as us as humans, we kind of go dormant. We go inward and we start working those magics that improve our mind, improve our spirit and stuff like that. So it's like there are when you look at it, there's the, the elements, earth, air, fire, water. There's the seasons of the year. You have all of these things. So all of these times and all of these different situations are pieces of the puzzle for what you need to have available to, um, you know, effectively work magic. As an example, some of the best times, and this is one, this is a book that I actually like um, by her. This is Moon Magic. Myths and Magic, Crafts and, and Recipes, Rituals and Spells by DJ Conway. And this is a rather, it's not a Wicca 101, but it is, you know, it, there's a lot in here. Myths and stories, bath salts, spells, um, all of these different things that will help you to get prepared and have ready so that you can uh, be more prepared. Full moon magic is the best. When you want to draw something to you, when you want to manifest, full moons are the best. Whenever you're wanting to work on your inner self to also to banish things from your life, the new moon, the dark moon, those are the best. Matter of fact, we're coming into a dark moon this coming Sunday, and we're getting together, and we're going to have an evening where we talk about divination. I think one of the things, and we'll talk about that here in just a minute, I think one of the most important things that you need to do before you work any magic is to get the lay of the land and kind of see what the world is, is looking like and stuff, because sometimes we need to be objective about how and why we're doing something specifically and magically, for one thing, because then that way um, we're going to have a better chance of having things work out, okay? Um, so you have that, you know, you have these basic things, and then you have magic such as, uh, tarot spells, working with tarot cards, using tarot as gates for the energy to bring good things into your, into your situation and stuff like that. Uh, there are, uh, you know, song spells, there is song magic. There is water magic. There's all these different things. So you have that. And then we move into another realm. And I'm going to take another drink.
Then we move into the magic that has been developed over the last three or 400 years. Actually, over the last, good God, seven or eight centuries, actually, as we have the idea of high magic, magic that isn't necessarily uh, performed by those that are of the, you know, the lower stature people. So this is for people that are a little bit more learned. And we have in that realm, the high magic, we have Western ceremonial magic. We have the OTO. We have Golden Dawn. And speaking of Golden Dawn, we have, there we go. We'll bring this back into focus. This book here, I think, is one of the first places that anybody who wants to look into not just magic for the manifestation of just getting things, but to work ourselves into a better state overall, this is one of the places where you want to start. Western ceremonial magic via the Golden Dawn. And there are traditions within uh, the Golden Dawn that are, you know, I think that are important to learn about, such as Goetic magic, uh, the Tree of Life, and um, the Tree of Life, and all these other forms and things ritually. Um, this is where the rubber hits the road. This is where you really start to work with your own vibrations, start to work with the vibrations of, of the universe. And really, it's like you're taking a, above earth magic, you're taking it 20, 30, 40, 50 times, and you're changing. You're changing your spirit. You change how you, your outlook on life because this isn't just about flash and, and all of that. This is about actually working yourself into a spiritual state so that the magic, whatever you pass on, will carry on forever and carry into your next existence and things like that. Um, and just as a, as a side note, for, for those that are into the idea of modernizing the ideas and concepts of magic and what they are without having to look at them in a fanciful way, um, I would recommend this be one of the first books. It's pretty deep. It's Real Magic by Isaac Bonowitz. And this is like a very cool treatment on the idea of, well, let's see here. It says, Bonowitz is witty and, and possessed of a mind that peers around corners. Real magic is a fresh exploration of magic. And what that means is it's like this book kind of takes into the idea of what statistically magic is and some of these other things. And it's a really good book. This is one of the first books that I ever got on the subject of how, how magic ties into a modern world. Okay. And I think this book does a really good idea of quantifying it in our minds because we're so analytical okay um so we have and there's just so many different you know different places that you can look up i suggest go online uh there are groups and and pages up for natural magic earth magic whatever it is um and we're going to talk about kind of the basics uh, just for a few minutes before we sign off here. But, okay, so you've got all of these things. You want to get a new car. You've looked into the, the styles of magic that I've talked about and stuff like that. The two basic things that you really need to – there's three basic things that you really need to do to get geared up to be effective as a pagan, witch, magician, whatever you call yourself. One. Start to take care of yourself physically. I'm trying to lose weight. I'm overweight. I'm in a bad shape. And I'm doing a keto diet. And what I'm trying to do is get myself healthier. Because the more healthy you are physically, the more able you are to handle what will uh, come of your body whenever you are working various magical practices. So on, eat healthy, drink healthy, you know, uh, and yes, mead, I, I know it's alcohol, but for one thing, this is made with honey. And it's just like, it's something, this is one of my vices, this and, and, and herb. And that's it. I don't have anything else. And a little bit of Irish whiskey. I've, I've got to admit that. But it's like, 
once you you are in that state where your body is accepting and able to you know just hold all this energy when you're heavy and sick and all these different things and you feel bad you can't effectively work magic so there's one thing we got two more things before we get ready to kind of roll out of this um the other part of this is the idea that uh we need to learn how to breathe what you do is just every day just take a few minutes and breathe slowly take the time to close your eyes shut out everything around you and just take deep breaths nothing fast nothing heavy and just let your body get used to the process of feeling that oxygen coming into your bloodstream and into your cells because you're powering yourself up. You're letting yourself become a conduit of the energies that you want to exploit and to work with uh, to bring about things magically, okay? Um, so you've done that. So you've done these two things. You, 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 you're taking care of yourself, eating, drinking correctly, you're breathing every day. And now one thing you can do is visualize and, and, and visualize all that is. And you're not doing anything magical. You're not concentrating on anything magical, but you're just practicing. And one of the practices is picture an orange. Hold that vision of that orange in your mind's eye with your eyes closed for as long as you can. Like I'm doing it right now. Actually, I'm looking at the guy picking the orange off the tree, but I am visualizing that. And you hold on to that as long as you can. If you can hold on to it for a couple of seconds and then your mind gets fuzzy and stuff, that's fine. But what you do is the more, do that several times a day. Just take a couple of minutes and just close your eyes and concentrate on that. Concentrate on the number one. Concentrate on something and visualize it. See it for what it is. And what that does is that gives you the ability to focus, concentrate, and to kind of like zero in on the, the thing that you want, whether it's love or new car or you want to commune with the gods or nature spirits or whatever it is, or talk to your spirit guides and things like that, because you can talk to your spirit guides is magic too. That's a magical practice, and we'll get into that in some future uh, episodes of Night Magic. Coming to you live from me, Raven Savannah Walker, the Order of Standing Oak, and Raven Temple of the Axe Wicca here on Zoom. And I am by myself, but that's okay because we're posting this up on Facebook. Or, well, yeah, we're probably going to post this, post this up on Facebook, but we're going to mainly put it on YouTube and then it'll be out there for everybody. And this is, like I say, this show is for the newbies. This show is not for you know, the, the advanced folks, we're kind of just going and taking it a little bit at a time. And this is for people of every persuasion, witch, shaman, druid, Norse, doesn't matter who you are and what you are. Magic is for everybody. Even children can do magic. Children have the most beautiful minds when it comes to anything magical. Foster that. If you are parents, foster your kids' love of the magical world. If they want to talk to fairies, help them. Get them out into the garden. You know help the little ones be what they are because they are the most beautiful little magical beings in themselves. And, you know, they're not kids for very long. So we want to nurture that as much as we can. So this is the first little installment. Sometimes we're going to be longer. Sometimes we're going to be shorter. Who knows? But this is night magic. And what we're going to do is we are going to do this as much as we can. You know, I've got other videos that are going to be coming out we've got events coming up with raven temple excuse me uh we've got new moon coming up this sunday and then on uh saturday uh september 11th we're doing an easter bloat and then after that bloat on the uh 11th on september 19th we're doing harvest moon and then coming up on october 30th we are holding our very own Winter Night Samhain, which is a combination of Winter Nights, which is the Norse Seax Wicca side of things, and Samhain. We're going to have a great deal. The Easter bloat 
We're going to have a ritual meal and assemble. We're going to be practicing magic, sympathetic magic. We'll, we'll talk about uh, that in the next episode. And we're just going to take this part one and just run with it. And then the next episode, and we're just going to go down the line and see where this goes. And for those of you that are out there, I would like to thank you guys for checking out this video, putting this up on, on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel, like, comment, subscribe, share it with your friends. And I uh, uh, would like it if you would to help the channel grow, to give us more ideas. Uh, we've got three tiers. We have a Patreon to so go to www.patreon forward slash a pagan perspective and join the uh, uh, Patreon. We've got some great folks that are backing us now, and we've got some great tiers, some things for the pagan people out there. We've got pay, we've got everything in there. We've got where I can do readings for you. We've got rituals and things that we can do. We've got live classes, which we're going to be starting to do here pretty soon. So please, www.patreon.com forward slash a pagan perspective i would really appreciate that and we're going to try to do this as much as we can so i'm going to go ahead and take another drink and we just needed to get this little little bit out the very first episode of night magic and we're going to take it along and i hope you guys like it and if you have any questions or suggestions of what you would like to see come up in an episode of night magic put it down in the comment section and I'll do it. We will talk about it. But until then, I would like to give you guys a little bit of a toast. Blessings of the old gods to all. I hope everybody is safe. I hope that your family is free of the ravages of COVID. And just know that uh, we love you. And we are here for you if you need us. We have our group pages on Facebook. And if you need to get a hold of me and have any questions, go ahead and email me. It's Sylvanus93, S-Y-L-V-A in the U.S. 93 at hotmail.com. And I will see you guys next time. We're going to go ahead and give you this toast. Oh, man. Makes my heart good to know that this is just the most beautiful, beautiful thing. So it's Friday. It's the night, Friday night before uh, Labor Day weekend. I hope you all have a great Labor Day weekend, and I will see you guys next time.